Um, it's great to see everybody this morning. I'm Adam. I know many of you, and it's it's really good to be together. It's a complicated moment that we're all living through in a variety of different ways, and uh, we're feeling it across the board in the education spectrum, and uh, as Michael laid out, so much is going on. This conversation, I think, has a chance to be a respite and and from some of that, and a conversation about some amazing things that are happening in a city that is very optimistic, that is forward-looking, and that is doing exciting things. Um, and, and so I'm really excited to have, be in conversation with John Ingram, who's the chair of Ingram Industries and who brought a MLS soccer team to Nashville. And from start to finish, you said, in 364 days, from idea to... From announcement to um, to uh, getting the, the club conferred on us, 364 days. Unbelievable. Didn't even have to put it on the balance sheet, right? Wow. So that happens in New York really easily, too. Um, there's just a couple of quick boards you have to go through in New York, but it's it's very easy. I'm still working on a permit for my house five years later. Um, and uh, Nick Zeppos, who was the chancellor of Vanderbilt University from uh, 2007 to 2019 and is now teaching at Vanderbilt as well, uh, a transformative institution is all of it, as, as we all know. And so I, I guess I'd love to say to, to both of you, um, and, and maybe we'll start with you, Nick, uh, what do you think is, is driving the growth that we're seeing in Nashville? And maybe you can share some of the things that are the hallmarks of that growth that we're seeing here. Sure. Uh, you know, I, 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 there's so many things. There's great leadership, great families, but I'll start. I'm putting my Vanderbilt hat on here a little bit, but I'll start with two two quick stories. They went to Daniel Patrick Moynihan, the senator. I don't know if anyone remembers Senator Moynihan. He's a great leader, a Harvard professor. He studied cities, and he was a sociologist. And they said, you know, you, you know cities and what makes cities work and don't work. And they said, he said, what's the best economic development plan for a uh, for a for a city? And he said, build a great research university and wait a hundred years. <laughs> and there's a certain truth to that when you look at the universities um, that drive the economy. The second story is, um, in my prior life, I spent a lot of time reading bond rating reports. And I found them fascinating and insightful and important. And there was a bond rating report that came out of Moody's. And it talked about what are the, going to be the leading cities of the future? Where should you be? And it said, eds and meds eds and meds. It said, where are their educational institutions? Where are their cities with a large number of colleges and universities and hopefully a big research university? Nashville has about almost 20 colleges and universities, including Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt Medical Center, with an economic impact of probably $20 billion. Nashville is the center of for-profit healthcare. Nashville is the center. It is where it was basically invented, and there's about $90 billion of revenue that comes through Nashville healthcare. Healthcare is 20% of the GDP. We're trying to solve the healthcare problems in Nashville. Vanderbilt does a billion dollars in research. And so I think the presence of a healthcare hub with great education really can move the needle and has made Nashville very attractive. And, and, and John, I think when I graduated college, you, you, you could watch a, a, you know, a Tennessee Volunteers game, basically, but there, you, there were no Tennessee Titans. There was certainly no MLS uh, franchise here. How did, how did Nashville move onto the national stage in, in these ways beyond as well? Well, I think, I think professional sports is important. You can argue it's too important, right? I mean, you know, when you think about what what professional athletes get paid versus, you know, um, professors or, or or others that are doing doing really important work. But I would also say back to what's driven um, success here in this state in this city. I, I think there's structural issues. I mean, it's a low tax state, right? It's um, it is not as much as it was 10 years ago, but it was an affordable place to live. Um, Nick mentioned you know, the, the, the university um, side of things, but it's, it's also <clears throat> been a welcoming place for people. Um, so I, I think there, there are a lot of dynamics about it that make it attractive when people come visit. Um, and the, and you know, probably more um, 
more attractive than people expect. And and when it comes to professional sports, um, one of the other things that's happening is is the in migration of 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 younger young professionals, foreign born residents, which quite frankly are right in the mainstream of of, of soccer audience. But I think it also points to the fact and and certainly a lot of a lot of people here in the audience. I mean, we live in a world now where where you can you can start things, you can run things. You don't you don't you certainly can be on the coast, um, but you don't have to be you don't have to be tethered to that anymore. Um, I'm a big fan of Steve Case's book. He, he wrote a book called The Rise of the Rest and, you know, places where, you know, where entrepreneurial opportunity and and and, and that the next the next fight is, is uh, for for grabbing, you know, the best and the brightest are going to be more about where's a great place to live and to be because you can do you can do your work almost anywhere. Um, and so I think Nashville has a has a real chance to to uh, disproportionately win um, in in that race. So in order to win in that race, you you need government to be functioning as some as a partner at some level. Uh, you are a this Nashville's a blue city in a red state. It's a phenomenon we're seeing across the country, across the south certainly and I think increasingly even in the in the north and the west that the cities are sort of have one perspective which can be increasingly left and you have state governments which can be increasingly right. How do you how do you get things done in that environment and in that climate? Well, I um, I could speak to a piece of it uh, personally. Um, again, I wasn't kidding. It was 364 days. I mean, I, I decided to jump into this MLS fray right before Christmas of of 2016. I, I remember it was it was December 21st was the day that local media started reporting on that. And it was literally December 20th of 2017 that that MLS came to convert the club to us. Now, in between then, we had to assemble an ownership group. We had to show that the business community was supportive of that. Um, you know, we had to, had to kind of show that, 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 that this city would support the sport. And then – but most importantly, we had to come up with a stadium plan. And and that's usually the that's usually the 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 one that that really blows everybody up. Um, but I mean, at at the time, our a mayor it was our our first female mayor, and unfortunately, she made some bad personal decisions and ended up you know um, having to, having to resign. Um, but but she I mean she got on board with it. Not because she was a, really a sports fan, and she was probably more progressive and from the left than 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 I am. But she saw it as a way of she saw soccer as a way of connecting um, parts of Nashville, the particularly the um, uh, the foreign-born parts that that kind of lived around the periphery, with connecting them with the with the rest of of kind of the the traditional parts of the city. And so she got on board with it from from that standpoint. And as I mentioned to you in the in the in the green room, when MLS came to visit, and and by the way, we had to beat out eleven other cities. And I'm not talking about little podunk places. I mean, San Diego, St. Louis, Charlotte, Cincinnati, Detroit. I mean, it could go on and on. I mean, it's, it's, you know, places that arguably you know were were bigger, you know, certainly bigger um, than than Nashville. But when MLS came to visit, um, our governor, a guy named Bill Haslam, who who may be coming to this, um, I, I'm not sure. But in, in any event, um, Bill uh, invited all of us to to the governor's residence for dinner, and that blew the MLS contingent away. They'd never been invited to something like that before. So so you know, really part of Nashville's secret sauce. I mean, and and part of kind of the the the, the fuel that has that has dictated the growth, um, and and been a lot of the reasons for you know um, uh, companies Bridgestone, Nissan, and more recently Amazon, Oracle to come to come locate here is because we have a uh, history. Now we had a, a little a little blip, in my opinion, over the last four years. Maybe not the the the, but but we have a a new uh, mayor and 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 I think you know a chance to to kind of get back on track with that. But the but the 
public sector and the private sector have worked very collaboratively here. That's great. Yeah, so, you oh, know, go ahead. Go ahead go I ahead. was going to say, I think the public sector and the private sector and the governor and the s mayors have been aligned on making this a can-do city and really saying we can bring Major League Soccer, we can bring a professional hockey team here, we can bring a, uh, a, a NFL team here, we can move Oracle here, we can have Amazon here. There's been alignment. And Nashville is small and it's big enough, it's a major league city, but it's small enough that relationships really matter. And you have to work those relationships. So, you know, we're a big not-for-profit, which means we don't pay taxes. And sometimes you're not viewed as a good citizen. And there was mm -hmm. a time when Vanderbilt was actually viewed as an 800-pound gorilla on West End Avenue. And that's what the, uh, the uh, uh, governor and mayor called us. Right. And we've really worked to be in the city, of the city, we work those relationships. I regularly would meet with the governor. I regularly meet with the mayor. We're down at the city council. We're in the community. We're contributing to the community. So those relationships and not just showing up and asking for things. Right. When you think of John and his family and what they've done for the city, there's a lot of history there of giving back. And, well, and going that's back to, really important. I think it is really important, and I think you see it more often in smaller cities than in larger cities because it's it's so diffuse. And if you think about in larger cities, it's hard it's hard to have those same ne nexus, the same nexus of relationships. Um, as you as you look at cities like Austin or uh, other cities that are in this hyper growth mode, you know, great city. University of Texas Austin is there. Some some similar characteristics. Same kind of tech folks are moving in and all of that. How do you craft a common vision for the future for for Nashville? One, and then two, how do you achieve it without breaking all the infrastructure and making everyone mad? You know, I, it's it's a it becomes more challenging because you as you grow, it seems that you grow more of the disruptive elements uh, tend to tend to come and 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 want to turn off my phone. Yeah, and and um, and I, I will tell you, I mean, I saw it. Um, when I was spending a lot of time in 2017 down at our Metropolitan Council, I was telling earlier, I mean, I saw every crazy-ass group you could imagine, um, you know, in the ear of, of different council people. And it really had a profound effect on me. We got done what we needed to get done. But, but I was like, you know, I don't want this city, my city, to, to, to you know, b become like that. You know, I... I even created a phrase. I mean, it's like, let Austin be weird. You know, they have that thing, you know, uh, uh, about being weird. And I'm like, let Austin be weird. Let's keep Nashville sane. And 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 with a group of other business people, help create, you know, a political action committee. Or, I mean, aimed at our city council. And and Nashville has a particularly large city council, 40, which is part of a of a city um, and and county merger that happened in the in the in the late 60s, and I mean our you know our whole point it's it's not ideological. I mean you don't have to be a this or a that. I mean the whole point is about trying to trying to um, identify, uh, recruit, and elect uh, business friendly, reasonable, centrist people, and and I think that I just use that as, as an example of. If you leave this to its own devices, um, you can end up kind of, you know, in a in a place you don't want to be. And and I mean, there are a lot of wonderful things about Austin, but but I think Austin has gotten more dysfunctional uh, than I would love to see Nashville ever become. Because quite frankly, nobody stood up and said said we need we need to be thoughtful about how do we keep it from that. How do we keep it in in a in a in a certain way and 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 that's easy particularly when you're running businesses and you know you you got 12,000 things to do anyway right i mean and and particularly if things are going well eh, that's somebody else's business or you know i don't see that as a problem but i i think it, it takes absolute intentionality to to make sure that you continue to have an environment that you want well as i was driving in the highway was crowded coming from the airport there was 
plenty of traffic. It wasn't Austin-esque, but there was plenty of traffic. Housing prices are going up, right? I mean, we, all of these, these trend lines are there. Is there tension against this growth coming within the city? Are you seeing that at the university or, or beyond know, its borders? You know, I, I would say that because you, know, you bring in a lot of these outsiders, Nick. Yeah, no, no, I I, I know that. Um, <laughs> I would say that we're part of the growth story. I think there is a kind of healthy conversation occurring right now on issues of affordable housing, transit, where this mayor has some ideas and he's going to have to work with the business community and the city council to really tackle them. I would say we know there are some challenges. I think the mayor's up to working with the business community to to, to address them and to make sure that Nashville kind of is still a draw for a lot of people. But it, but it takes it's going to take some compromise. I mean, I think about um, when we built this, the stadium, which is a mile and a half from here, over in an area called the fairgrounds, um, we also got a long-term lease for 10 acres around, around the stadium. And as part of that, we had the privilege of doing Nashville's first community benefits agreement, which, which you know, it was a lot of uh, affordable housing and, and things like that. And it's really hard to make that work economically. Um, and but but I'm, I'm, I'm why, why is that? Because the cost of building that stuff just is so ex- extraordinarily high. Well, well the, the 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 cost is what the cost is, right? The problem or the problem from an econo- from making it work economically is the fact that you only get to charge, you know, sixty percent or seventy percent of what you, what the what the true market value might be. So so, um, you know, it takes it takes either. Uh, in many cases, uh, y- you know, it takes uh, developing on um, city-owned property or something like that, so so that you so that you can get the get the the underlying real estate, you know, at a very good price or have it given to you, uh, because what it costs to build is what it costs to build. But but back again to the stadium. I mean, we we agreed, and the first phase of what we're building is is going to be. You know, it's not going to be a di- double-digit type of return. Sure. It's, it's going to be a single-digit return, and and we decided that that would be where we invested the primary, uh, the the most amount. Why? Because it would be less attractive to uh, to other people, right? But it was the right thing to do, and it's part of, you know, part of if if this whole ecos. I mean, if 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 this is going to work. Um, going to have to come together and you're going to have to make some compromises so so and I'm, I'm curious from the perspective of sort of students on campus as well when you when you know this some of the culture wars have come to the region i mean there was the no drag queen law that was proposed and um and then some some you my know, students struck that law down as unconstitutional is that right? My former students, yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, 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 how do you, how, when, when you're trying to, you know, you have people that are, you have a very conservative region of the country, not very far from the city, and you have lots of people who are coming in who probably have very different perspectives, you know, and, and the university is often the place where those ideas kind of can come together and clash. You know, how do you manage through that as the chancellor of a university? I think it's wonderful. I mean, I think the clash of ideas is really what education is about. I think that um, people were drawn to Nashville. I mean, I, why, why? idea was always what great university is just dropped down in the middle of a mid-sized American entertainment capital. There's no other place like it. There's no other place where you just say, hey, I'm in the middle of a city and it's a manageable city. It's not a huge city. If you look at Northwestern, it's out in the suburbs. WashU is out in the suburbs. Most of the other universities are in big cities. I think if Columbia University disappeared, it would be a tragedy for many people, but most of New York wouldn't even know. Yeah. And so we have kids who come here and say, this is phenomenal. You can go to a professional hockey game. You can go to a football game. It's an entertainment capital. And by the way, it has phenomenal academics. We have parents who come the problem we have now is the parents are coming to visit the kids too much. It's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, we want to come down. It's not parents weekend. Well, we want to go to a concert. But Gen Z needs help doing their laundry. 
Absolutely. Sorry, sorry to all my Gen Z. Yeah. So I, I'm not I think, a boomer. I'm just a Gen X, sort of watching this whole war play out. I, I, I think I'll tell you another thing: is we we weathered through the 2008 crash really well, and I think that helped the university, and I think it helped the city because there were jobs for people, and I think that made a big, big difference in terms of seeing this as a place where you could go to school and then stay. Our kids love Nashville. It's a big draw. So. I, I think for all of us, there was you saw from the room when I asked, there are a lot of us who are new to Nashville or learning about Nashville, experiencing it, and we'll have a little bit of extra time. What are some of the not-so-well-known must-dos and must-sees for this city? Well, I'm going to say, first of all, go for a tour of the Vanderbilt campus. Uh, I'm biased, but it's a National Arboretum, and it's a walkable campus. And if you're looking to get your steps in today, it's a wonderful way to get your steps in. I think you have to do the hot chicken. I don't know if you've done the hot chicken already, but what's it, the hot chicken? The hot chicken is hot chicken. Is that a dance? Oh my! No, 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 no! <laughs> it's, a, it's 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 food. It's food. It's food. Although it might be a dance, I've not come. Yeah, the, the dance comes after chicken. you. Even. Oh, okay, yeah. got it. Like I'm it's really hot down chicken. Down on there. Broadway. Yeah. Okay. So you've got to try the hot chicken. You've got to try the barbecue. Barbecue. Now, what bar now, barbecue? We're Southern barbecue. Martin's is is very good. Um, peg leg porker. Peg leg porker in the is, in the gulch would be yeah. another one. Okay. That's, I, I would say for those. I mean, part of what I love so much about about Nashville is not only I mean my business is here, family's here, but you know you're 15 minutes away from doing almost anything outside that you want to do. Um, there are wonderful parks. I mean, I would say anyone that's a little ambitious, go. Um, uh, south um, and find Percy Warner Park. I mean, for I mean, for cycling, for 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 hiking, for walking. Um, you know, there's just wonderful act, outdoor stuff to do, just just all around. Um, you know, that's you know not really on the on every on the tourist uh, guide list. I, I also think, and we we talked about this before, Adam. Um, you had your dinner last night. I don't know if any of you ventured out to Broadway. And they, they wouldn't be here this morning. Yeah. Yeah. You, no, you, have, you have to see, I talk to you have to see Lower Broadway or Broadway. And just, it, well, you'll see it differently tonight because um, um, Nashville is the bachelorette capital yes. of the world. Yes, we're the bachelorette and, capital and, and of the world. And Thursday, Friday, and, and Saturday get to be pretty special around here. Yeah. But it'll, it'll give you the sense of... Wow, this is a vibrant downtown. And I think that's why we're so committed to solving some of the problems like traffic. These businesses are downtown, and they need to move people in and out. Um, but it also illustrates a little bit of our challenges. It kind of, you know, I, I've always said an economy based primarily on tourism is not a healthy economy. We have a very diverse economy, but you see what downtown is and you kind of say what about the locals like me how does it affect us coming downtown so it gives you some sense of the challenges can you say more about that is sort of it, uh, that's the town gown stuff and it's a little bit of the the sort of haves and have nots and it, it's less outsiders insiders it's less town gown that it is if you will old nashville versus new and 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 the whole idea of how do you grow and and um, you, you know, um, because there's a se there's a segment of people that have grown up and lived here that that are like, well, we don't want to grow anymore, and, and you know, the, and the truth of the matter is, there are worse things than growth. Uh, try shrinking. Uh, you know, any of you from cities that are shrinking, and I know some of you are because you're all coming here. Um, but <laughs> um, but you know that that is that is a a, a tough, a tough balance, and it really takes. I mean, it takes people getting together and having real conversations, and and maybe being more selective about, what, what, you know, what do you incent um, uh, from, you know, what 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 businesses do you want to incent to to come to relocate? What kind of environment do you want to have uh, to try and encourage business to, businesses to be developed from here? 
uh, those are the conversations that I'm interested, you know, in having and and do have with you know, kind of the local um, um, uh, city and state leadership to kind of try to get them thinking about that. You know, uh, keep them thinking about it. Yeah, Adam. When I first came, um, I would say there was tension between old Nashville and the music industry. And I think the people who are trying to build a new Nashville were a little bit, I mean, I'll say embarrassed by the country music brand. Hmm. And I think people like John's family, John's mother, it's like, we're Music City USA. We have a great symphony. We have the Fist Jubilee Singers. We have country music. So it was weaving together a narrative of creative people and not having the town gown or, you know, the kind of Bell Mead versus the country music industry. And I think that was a vision that people had to, how do you bring these strengths together and bridge these differences? And that's made a big difference. Music is a big driver and it shows the creativity of the community, which has helped Vanderbilt enormously. So I, I can't help but think I live in a. I, 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 this conversation is one that feels like it's it leans into optimism, at a time when it's hard for a lot of us to feel optimistic. I mean, the general tone of the news and politics in America doesn't feel terribly optimistic, and so. It, for those of us who are going home, you know, me going home to Brooklyn, those of us going home to other cities, what can what, what might we bring home of this sort of spirit of optimism uh, to transplant into our own communities to sort of you know get a little bit more of the optimism going? Because this optimism feels optimism can be as contagious as pessimism can be. I don't know. I mean that the and also can you solve world poverty? Yeah, uh, not in the next five minutes. I don't yeah, think. But okay. uh, um, I think it, it maybe it starts with the fact that. So many of you, m most of you here are, are entrepreneurs, right? I mean, that's why you're, why you're here. You're, you're attracted to it. I mean, I think by very nature, being an entrepreneur means you are a natural-born optimist. Be because if you weren't, there would be no way that you would endeavor to do the things that, that, you, that you've done. And, and I, I don't know. I mean, I've kind of I, – I, I think that um, – you know, I do think it's part of the responsibility of the entrepreneur community and 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 optimists to to engage and 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 engage and try to find political leaders that that are willing to um, to in engage with the other side, whether you're coming from the right towards the left or the left to, towards the right, because you can't do it without without both. You know the the the, the political um, element as well as the, the, the business side of things. Go back to what we said earlier. I mean, a lot of Nashville's growth and success has come from the fact that we've had, we've had really good, reasonable politicians, you know, and that, that, that worked with the business community. Nothing, nothing, you can't do anything if you can't, if you can't work together. I mean, it's, it's impossible. So I think, you know, I think it starts with trying to intentionally um, um, su support, you know, pe people um, who, who kind of have that as part of, 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 their, of, their, of their program is this, I'm, I'm willing, to, will, willing to work with the other side. And somehow we've got to get back to this idea that, you know, I've got to get 100% of what I want or... You know, you know, used to be you get 60, 60 plus percent of, of what you want. You give the other guy something and 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 you call that victory. And and we maybe it's the, the optimists in this room and the entrepreneur community that's got to figure out how to how to how to bring that back. You know, I was at a uh, tech conference last week with a bunch of CEOs. Sounds familiar. And the one thing we talked about, we talked a lot about artificial intelligence, augmented intelligence. And what we talked about was what makes human beings different. And the idea of hope and optimism, now maybe that can be programmed in, but um, you know, how do you lead? What's your vision? How do you inspire other people? I think those are things that you have to work on as a leader. 
Those are human qualities, and you're moving as entrepreneurs, as John said, you're moving other people to do things, and you have to inspire them. I mean, there are challenges for sure. I know you face many challenges, but a leader has to be an optimist, has to watch the downside, but a leader as a human being has to really be an optimist. No one wants to work for a pessimist. This isn't going to work out. We're probably going to go under. I mean, it's like, it's like, well, great. I'm so glad I signed up. But I think it's a, I think it's a key human quality. And yeah. as leaders, I think you really have to work on that. Awesome. Well, hot chicken. This was a great conversation. Yes, so yes. thank you. I'll thank teach you. you the steps. Okay. Thank you both so much. Thank, thank you, you yeah, John. Yeah.